Now just think about that. 286 verses revealed over a 10 year period. Simultaneously other chapters are being revealed. And he found a complex concentric pattern within Surah Baqarah. Then he says, I didn't find one. I found concentric pattern within concentric pattern within concentric pattern. He said the complexity for a man to do this through memory in his view is not possible. No, but Ken, what I want you to do, I want you to be critical. Of course. Because when you're critical, you are open to, uh, to learn, to investigate, to analyze, right? And I really do want you to do that. It's, it's but a Ken, matter of but argument. I was thinking to myself, how interesting would this have to be for me to think it's divine? A verse would just come to him, peace be upon him, and he would utter that verse and he would tell the companions where the verse went. End of the matter, no editorial process, no rubbing it out afterwards because it doesn't fit. It's there, it's done and it's dusted. evidence of divinity. Okay, so Ken, so I don't like to use the word proof to be honest. I don't either. No, no, you know, we, because I believe... By proof. Yeah. Here's, here's something that has no proof at all. Right. Here's something that has hundred percent yes. proof. Yes. We like to get right here. Right. So having substantial or good reasons to believe something to be true, right? Well, I mean, you're, let, let's, you know, this hasn't been said just by me. You've heard this said all over. You're saying the tradition of the Quran implies a divine source. Yes. That's a fantastic claim. Yes. So it can't just have, yeah, the evidence is... No, I agree. For it. No, I agree. It's got to be outstanding. Because of course. you know as well as I do... Of course. That a human can do anything. Of course. If they put their mind to it. Of we course. see, you know, go on the internet, you see all kinds of things yes. of... You look at it and it's like, how oh, in the world did they do that? How in the world did they memorize yeah. that? Yeah. How could someone speak 25 languages? You know, it, yeah. it, it goes on and on. You're absolutely right. So these are the perhaps some of the very smallest pieces of the puzzle, let's say. There were some certain other things. So for example, Allah says in the Quran, if you are truthful, then come come to a chapter, make construct a chapter like it, make a chapter like it. And we're gonna struggle with this one. No no hold on a second. <laughs> you could argue that to some extent that could be subjective, right? Well it is objective. Right. Exactly. Right. What now I, I've asked people here before at the park. I and the the, okay. the conversation quickly died as soon as I said this. Yes. I said, okay, give me the attributes of what this has to be. And right. someone said, has to be in Arabic. I said, okay, there's one. Has to be in Arabic. Yeah. Fair enough. So the others? So one of the things, Ken, about that is that I studied a book by uh, Professor Raymond Farin. He's a, a, a white American guy. Yeah. I think Georgetown University. Yep. He uh, studied. He studied um, uh, uh, a very traditional old. Arabic poetry for some reason he wanted to you know most of us Asian guys you know his doctor or uh, your accountant or whatever but you white guys you, you you study everything which is amazing right but anyway he wanted to study uh, this classical Arabic poetry somebody said to him look the Quran is actually it's not regarded as poetry but it really rhymes all the way through why don't you study a little bit about the Quran as well so he studied the Quran and Professor Raymond Farin became a Muslim from studying the Quran. Now what was it that convinced him that this book was a miracle? Well, I don't Let me explain know. to you. Let's hold on a second. How about this? Let's concede yeah. the whole story yeah. that he read this and did it and it was very, No, no, but let me, let, let me give you his reasons because like it's important. He read it. Let's, let's grab this. He read it and yeah. thought that that is definitely no, 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 evidence. No, 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 that's no not, doubt about it. No, no, that's not the point though. 
don't know. Ken, let, let, me, let me just give you the reason why he accepted it. He, he, he basically looked at the... Because he was a, a, a really interested in language and how language was constructed. So he looked at these principles within language that you find called chiasm, parallelism, uh, concentrism. These are patterns that occur. So for example, a concentric pattern would be uh, a link of the entire subject matter when you divide it into portions then it forms a concentric ring of linkage which is can be easy or can be incredibly complex to do and what he found is that within the Quran those concentric and parallel uh, and chiasm those 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 uh, those those, those uh, links were so complex that he said an oral tradition a man in a desert in the seventh century who orated this Quran it would have been impossible for him to have done this because of the sheer complexity so for him it became more less subjective and more objective that the the, the the mechanics of this language and the way that it was constructed was so incredibly complex that he felt that this was not the work of any human being um, one of the uh, surahs he studied was Surah Baqarah which is the second chapter of the Quran and he divided it into nine portions it's 286 verses which we were told are revealed over a 10-year period whilst other simultaneous uh, chapters were being revealed so the Prophet ﷺ would have said this verse refers to this surah and it comes after this verse or in oral transmission now just think about that 286 verses revealed over a 10-year period simultaneously other chapters are being revealed and he found a complex concentric pattern within Surah Baqarah then he says I didn't find one I found concentric pattern within concentric pattern within concentric pattern he said the complexity for a man to do this through memory in his view is not possible so for, that was his piece of the puzzle that convinced him professor Raymond Farin there was another professor by the name of Neil Robinson a professor of in Leeds again within linguistics he accepted Islam because he believed that this could not be the work of a human being so the Surah Baqarah for example the 286 verses he divided it into nine sections he said the first First section is linked and connected to the ninth section the second to the eighth the third to the seventh until you get down to uh, the fourth and the sixth How are they connected? The, the subject matter and what it's referring to is perfectly linked okay. and in the middle section of section five he finds a completely unique message that ties all of the other nine sections together but the interesting thing was that within that concentric pattern he said there are other chapters like for example uh, verses like uh, ayat al-kursi it's nine verses which itself has a concentric pattern and when you study that believe me when i studied it i was awe inspired i thought to myself subhanallah such a complexity and he says it would have been difficult enough if not impossible to do with an editorial process and yet we have a memorization and an oral transmission and remember no record of any editorial process so for example the prophet muhammad an incident would occur and sometimes a verse would just come immediately there was no forethought about thinking that oh if this happens and this companion comes to me and he says this then I will uh, memorize this thing and I will say this to him a verse would just come to him peace be upon him and he would utter that verse and he would tell the companions where the verse went end of the matter no editorial process no rubbing it out afterwards because it doesn't fit it's there 
it's done and it's dusted. Now, centuries later, we have people investigating these things who are not Muslim, who are convinced that this evidence is so weighty that it could not have come from anyone other than Allah, other than God. So he accepts Islam. You can go on YouTube, you no, can no, watch his videos. That's all fine. I was listening to that. Right. I was thinking, well, how would, if I wanted to look at this one play, this is one of many he made, how would I, how would I look and judge whether this is what he says it is? Look. Almost impossible. For no, me. it's not. I, I will look at No, it's it. not. I bought, said, I bought his book. All I would say is the yeah. fact that two people are convinced of it is, you know, it's, these claims are a dime a dozen. You know, how many claims... Look. How many, how about this? Yes. How many claims are there by Christians of people finding something that they find, you know, remarkable in the Bible and just, that's it. This has a divine source. But Ken, what, what, what I would urge no, you I, to do... I listened to your story. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, listened to your story. Yeah, yeah. And, you know... No, but Ken, what I would urge you, know, you to I was, do... I, you know, I'm just listen, thinking about it critically. It's just yeah. like, okay, how, compl how good would this thing have to be for me to buy that? Yeah. You know, I don't know. No, but Ken, I, mean, I, no, Ken, the, 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 Ken, I, I there would be other questions yeah. as well, yeah. as, as in, you know, was the Quran revealed, did, did Muhammad do it in pieces like he said, or was it written down all at once, or, were, you know, no, I can, think, can I just, again, we don't have documentation to talk about, so I don't can, can, can I just please, can I just look, I want you to I be, I don't know that much about No, no, I understand, one. no, but Ken, what I want you to do, I want you to be critical, of course, because when you're critical, you are open to, uh, to learn, yeah. to investigate, yeah. to analyze, right, and I really do want you to do that. It's, it's but a matter of argument. I was thinking to myself, how interesting would this have to be for me to think it's divine? Yes. You know, how many things on this planet do we have that are created by men? Where we look at, you know, take, uh, you know, probably people say similar things about Mozart or wherever. You know, some of these composers, like, how on earth did he compose that? How, how is that possible? This, you know, but we don't subscribe. No, but Ken, to go back to your point, which is that. In, you know, in Christianity, you'll have Christians who will claim things, and no, all different people claim all sorts of things, right? Yeah, they wouldn't have the same tradition. Uh, no, I understand. Know, but Ken, what I would suggest to even those claims is that, you know, look at their claims, I do. critically analyze them, and Allah has given you and me and everybody else here an aspect of rationale and reasoning, not just to buy our food and cook a meal and, and you know and, and and just you know ponder about you know what are we going to do tomorrow but more important fundamental co uh, concepts like you know why am i here uh, why is this universe here why was i i understand i understand and so what i will say to you is that can this is just one point or, or, or a handful that i've raised to you that convinced me but there were many many others this is the one that i didn't you know I, i've said as much as i can i can't really you know, you said it's amazing, and you told me how it's amazing, and I was just like, well, there's nothing I can say about this, because I haven't read it in Europe. Yes, no, but what I, what, I would like, what I would suggest, Ken, is this. I've made a very bold claim about it being very profound. <laughs> I, I appreciate that you haven't had time to obviously investigate this particular claim. I mean, it's like what, it's, it's one of those, there, it's not about the realistic, it's like, what are the realistic chances that I really wanted to see? Okay, what are these guys seeing in this? What, what are they seeing? So what do I have to do? Will I have to read, learn Arabic? And no, then... no, what I, would, what I would suggest is, look, the first thing that I did when I heard about Raymond Farin was that I went on YouTube. Well, that's what I was, that's why what, I asked. I you know, like, well, I'm what is this guy? I has to say and I didn't right what this guy's talking about. and I didn't find many videos about him but I knew somebody mentioned that he'd written a book so I thought the next logical step for me to analyze the validity the veracity the strength of his claim was to perhaps buy his book so I bought the book so I read the book and and from that, from that information, uh, and you could argue that, well, I have his book, yeah. So, I, 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 so you could argue that, okay, you're already a Muslim, 
you may have some confirmation bias or whatever to accept perhaps what he has Right, right. But what I would say to you, Ken, is that do investigate it, look at it critically. And, uh, and when you look at it, you know, um, analyze it and, and absorb it and then make a rational, reasonable uh, decision. Like, so for example, Ken, you know what a lot of people, I find it really, not, not yourself, because I think you've been a very nice, very open discussion, but I find often when it comes to discussions about God, people are very disingenuous. And you know what happens? If I was to convince them of what television to buy or what car to buy, with the evidence that I might provide in support of that claim, often they would have no problem to accept it on balance of probability. I would say equally to give you a compliment, you haven't said anything that I found disingenuous, I, which is very few conversations I can say. There were things you said that I didn't do, agree with or things that I thought were wrong. One of the other things I studied... But there's nothing, there's nothing you said where I was just like, oh, it's just... I understand. Yeah. One of the other things, uh, Ken, that really really impressed me Walaikum Salaam one of the other things that really really impressed me and this is something I've just actually looked into very recently because I think you're always, you're always learning right was the grammatical perfection of language within the Quran now you might think what does that mean you know and so Allah talks about many things in the Quran many subjects and and when we talk about things, we sometimes slip up. So for example, if I don't know, for ex one example, if I don't know when the Pharaonic dynasty started and ended, I might just call all of them pharaohs. Or I might just call all of them kings. Because I don't have that knowledge of hieroglyphics to know when these dynasties started and they finished. Allah mentions, uh, about Fir'on, the Pharaoh, and he refers to a dynasty um, as king at one point. And you sort of think to yourself, why king here and Pharaoh here? It sort of makes no difference, really. How many different mentions of king and Pharaoh? I'm not sure how many, but I, to Egyptians and uh, I'm not sure, but you can easily Google that. But I'm just talking about this one incident here. Now, it turns out that when hieroglyphics are discovered later, it's discovered actually that that was the dynasty of Pharaoh started at this point at Moses when it's mentioned in the Quran. And in fact, it was more accurate to refer to the previous dynasty as king. Now, you could say, okay, it's a lucky guess, or it could be whatever. No, you could. You could argue that. No, what I would say now, is now, it's, now, like, it's in historical now, records. Now, already. Ken, now, Ken, right? it's, when you find... It's in historical records already. And then, but it wasn't. That's the point. It wasn't in historical not, not at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the amazing... The hieroglyphics weren't written down. No, no, the hieroglyphics was a lost language for thousands of years. It was only, the, 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 I think, the Germans and the Swiss in the 18th century that they once again started to uh, you know uh, decipher the hieroglyphic now my point to you Ken is that if that was one incident you could argue that it's not particularly impressive the Quran's grammar on a multitude of subjects is with that type of precision and you think to yourself no man in a desert in the seventh century herding goats would talk like that with that level of precision on every aspect so for example Allah mentions uh, a marriage and there's a certain word in Arabic that Allah uses for a marriage there's a certain word Allah uses for a marriage where there is a child and when Allah refers to some people when they don't have a child the word is different now that they've had the child the word is different is the word I'm not sure actually uh, I just heard it yesterday on uh, Norman Ali Khan's lecture and the, word, the, the person that you need to go to on, on, on YouTube for these grammar gems is a man called Norman Ali Khan. There are two words, Zoja and Imra. Zoja and Imra. Thank you very much, brother. So Allah uses the word Zoja in certain uh, con uh, contexts and he uses a different word 
when there's a blessing of a child. Allah uses a different word, um, you know, for so many different things. And when you look at the precision, you think to yourself, but nobody talks like that. When you're free and you're discussing stuff and you're saying stuff and you're saying these words are from God. Now the question arises, how does a man in a desert ensure that a book is revealed that remains preserved? It's easy to remember and is memorized by millions, has aspects of nature that do not contradict what we now commonly believe and, and understand, is grammatically perfect in its construction. And then when Allah places the challenge, and remember there were not many non Muslims at the time of Muhammad when this challenge was revealed if you are truthful provide a chapter like it if I'm a fake if I'm a fraud the last thing I'm going to do is challenge the the, the poets and the authors and the linguists to come up with like a chapter like my book because I'm claiming my book is from God because just imagine they would have rushed to the challenge and they would have come up with beautiful texts and the people around who were judging would have said yes Muhammad what you're, you're saying these people have come up with it so easily but for 14 centuries uh, Ken that challenge stands, stands today and there are many non-Arab, uh, non-Muslims living in Egypt, living in it. And why don't they come forward and say, look, we produce this, forget the Quran. You said one chapter, the smallest chapter in the Quran is only two verses. Here we go. We've, we've met your challenge. Here's the videos on YouTube. You guys are false. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing challenge. I don't find the challenge. I'll tell you what, just to make a concession. So you were talking about the, the poetic structure of it and um, how it's revealed piecemeal, but yet the, a certain structure found. Yes. You know, that's, that's something where we have to sit there and if we have to ask ourselves, oh, that's, that's impressive. Is, is that possible? Yes. Can a man do that? Yes. If he can't do that, how do you? How do you get in situation? So, you know, like I said, I didn't say, I haven't said very much for the last 20 minutes yes. because I haven't read um, Ken, in, are, that, in that kind of detail. Ken, there are other, so, other but, couple of things I just want to add. However, yeah. however. Yeah. So that one I would say, well, I don't have, I don't have an explanation. For yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know enough about it. Yes. What I would say about the one about present the challenge, I, I, would, I, you can take I don't find that one to be impressive. Well, because, because you're, exactly not, an, you're, not, you're not an Arab speaker, so it would be difficult for you. The problematic part of it is give me, you know, bring one like it. What does that mean? No, I agree. That challenge is not for you. No, 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 but Ken, that, 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 Ken, that challenge is not for you. That challenge is for those Arabs who speak Arabic. Because for them, they knew the language, you see. So for them, that was the challenge. Now, Ken, other amazing things that I found that convinced me that this is amazing. No, no, one, one or two other things, quickly, very quickly. Allah mentions in the Quran, these verses, as I said, were revealed over 23 years, different verses of different chapters, etc., etc., right? Allah mentions woman and he mentions man. Throughout the Quran, they appear exactly the same amount of times. And Allah says they are equal. Allah mentions the similitude of Adam and Jesus, the similarity, both created, one without a father, the other one created without a mother and a father. The, the similitude, the comparison of the two, they're both mentioned exactly 25 times in the Quran. Where Allah discusses the similitude of Adam and Jesus, at the point in the Quran that he mentions that, they're mentioned exactly the same number of times who speaks like that who, who constructs language like that here's the, here's the when you put it together and say we have to put a lot of things together and we have to concede an awful lot of things the fact that they're in there 25 times is as clear as day we can go in and count them. the question of how they got in there is a completely different question now you've offered that they've come in bits and pieces and therefore it's definitely divine. Uh, no, 
no. I'm saying to you, yeah. like those somebody, are my reasons for believing. I just wrote something haphazardly and it came out 25 and 25. Yes. Uh, is that possible? Yeah, sure it's possible. Yeah. I mean, is it no, but Ken, my, my, no, but my, Ken, Ken, my point to you, referring to all these different... It doesn't matter how they got in there. Yes. So it would be trivially easy for me to write a book and say, well, I'm going to put Adam's name in here 25 times, I'll put Jesus' name in here for 25 times. And we know that people did that. Yes. No, but Ken, my, my, look, but Ken, my point to you was... Like, can you think of anything nice and neatly orchestrated in that way in the Bible? Yeah, of course. 14, 14, 14, 14. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, but Ken, my point to... But that number was in a specific text, a specific verse, specific section in the Bible. These uh, mentions are throughout the Quran. They're scattered everywhere. Scattered. I, I, you know, I totally agree with it. And this is what I said. I said, if, if, he's, if these are being given piecemeal, if that's exactly how they got in there... Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, but Ken, my, my point to you is this... No, but Ken, I can, can I refer to that point, please? Look, there, there are two or three things here. Number one... I've just, I, honestly, you might not believe me. I have not even skimmed the surface of the different reasons of why I believe this book is from God. I've literally not even skimmed the surface. Now, the, the issue here is this, Ken. You're quite right. Could it just be chance that Jesus is mentioned and Adam is mentioned? You're right, it could be. No, but my point here, Ken, is this. I wouldn't actually support No, 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 but, no, no but, I, but Ken, my point, but my, my point to you, Ken, is this. You see, the more things that you find like that, the less it becomes chance and the more probability it becomes deliberate. Well, not necessarily. We, as I just mentioned, we know that when men wrote books, they did things like that deliberately. The question is, did that have, did they do that deliberately in the Quran? Yes. Now, the Muslim tradition holds a few, you know, puts a few markers down to make that uh, unlikely. One saying that Muhammad could read, he was a goat herder, not very well educated, got the thing here and there, different chapters, not in order, over 23 years. So there's a bunch of markers for us to, to go around. And all I would say is... <laughs> but you know what, Ken? This, 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 you know, this, when, this, when it really comes down to it, yeah. and I think, you know, you would probably appreciate this more if, if a Christian were bringing you an argument and you kind of dismiss it. No, but Ken, Ken, look, the, the issue here is this, you know. So, 25 and 25, yes. my actual answer to that is, you know, to be honest, I think someone put it in there. But, but Ken, you know, the, the, what I'm, my, my point, and to emphasize it, is this. You see, some, the, the, the the agnostic or the or the atheist or the or the denier let's say in some ways i feel wants to have his cake and eat it no not at all I, I'll, I'll explain to you why not not you per se i'm just saying generally so one claim is being made that this right. quran was not Actually, preserved go ahead tell me how i'm having my cake, cake and eat no no not you personally i'm saying we, i've said something no no but no, no but let me explain to you why no, no, taking let, me, let, me, let me let me explain to, let, me, let me let me let me explain I to you no because i don't i try not to do that no no i understand no i'm not saying you are ken per se um, on the one hand, there is this skepticism of preservation. They feel that preservation to the letter it can't really happen. No, why? And, no, no, but let, let me just please. There's good reason. No, no, but let me just but let me just finish my point. And they're almost convinced, in fact, that there wasn't preservation. Yeah. And on the other hand, what you have to realize is that if the f the function of corruption, there are two or three aspects. I believe that you have to find... It's not corruption. Well, if it's change, it's corruption. Right? It's not corruption. If I tell you something, hey, go over there and tell this guy X, Y, and Z. Yes. The chances of you relating that right yes. are, are minimal. Well, whether it's, volu they're, they're minimal. whether it's voluntary or involuntary... And it has nothing to do with you trying to mess no, up... No, 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 that's like, right. Oh, what did he say? No, no, uh, but I'm not saying that. I'm not, look, it, corruption does it, not it, mean that, deli that, deliberate. That, that's why. It doesn't have to be deliberate. That's the reason, is because we know how difficult that is to get through. Yeah, no, but Ken, my point is that the corruption doesn't have to be deliberate. It can be accidental. So, on the one hand... So, so if that was the case, that the Quran had changed, did change, 
then these thousands of examples that you find with grammar, with concentric patterns, all of those rules actually start falling apart. Maybe. Well, because not all of them. The, well, the nature of well, I'm not saying all of them, but I'm saying many of them. Like a lot of them, you so, said 25, 25. Yeah. Subject matter here corresponding to subject right. matter here. That wouldn't affect any of those. Right. Well, it could do because you could have one could less. Do. You could, could, could have do. one less mention, right? It could do. Or you could have one mention of Jesus slightly later in the chapter in the, in the Quran, which would mean that at that point they weren't the same, right? It could do. But Unless, yeah. of course, no. someone was counting. But my that was part of their right. barometer. But my, but my and, point and making sure that they had memorized it. Right. Right. Memorized but, it, right. But my, some markers that I have to remember to keep in there yes, when I'm memorizing Yes, yes. It. Well, my point to you, Ken, is that, that if that corruption had occurred, did occur, what, what, you, sorry, sorry. what, what, you, what you would find, what you would find, what you would find, Ken, it's okay, he didn't, he didn't realize. What you would find, Ken, is that over time, it's, it's, it's rational, it's reasonable to assume that that corruption would increase over time, not decrease over time. That's a, I think it's a valid argument, right? Unless I'm you actually can. trying to think about it. I'm trying to think about the case of the Bible, whether it's Especially changed I'm talking about the Quran. more in the first 200 years I'm talking about the Quran. or in the last, because I think in the Bible, I think they say that it changed more in the first 200 years. Would you agree with that? I'm uh, not a historian, so I don't know, but I'm, I'm well, guessing that. Well, every translation, guessing that every translation and every edition is different from the previous one, virtually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, I mean, but, but, but Ken, my point to you is that it's, it's reasonable to assume that a corruption increases over time, doesn't decrease well, over time. this is just what I was talking about. Normally, yes. Um, yeah. so, so my point to you, Ken, is that... I'm sure that follows one way or the well, other. I, I'll tell you... I'll tell I think you, it, would, it, would, it would depend upon the circumstances, whether someone was paying attention to it or not. But Ken, let me give you an example why I believe that to be true, sure, right? Sure. Like, without so, someone looking at it, it would definitely be more. Yes. Okay, Ken, so... If you had, if you had a group of people kind of checking, and see, see, like, this is what I'm saying about now, it's just like, since the advent of things like the printed press, there's more knowledge around, we get to know more about, okay, what have you got in your document, what have you got in your document? So before that, things just kind of wander on their own path. Now we have kind of a global in information. Let, so let me explain to you. Like the internet kind of... Yes probably have a way of yes. keeping things yes. in. But Ken, let me explain to you, for example. Like language, for yes. example, is another one that usually changes. It's probably becoming more the same. Ken, Just let me explain to you why I believe uh, in the the, the the aspect of preservation, not solely based upon you know, an imam reading in Ramadan or whatever. So when the Quran is revealed, it's revealed over an extended period of time, 23 years. There are a lot of companions who learn part of the Quran and they go back to their lands, wherever they've come from, whether it's Syria, whether it's uh, Egypt, wherever it might be. When the Quran is completed, and obviously the Islamic empire grows, the Quran spreads. So it spreads from China to Africa, uh, to right the way up to Europe, in fact, right to uh, Spain, right? Now, this Quran, since then, is being recited as I said to you in the month of Ramadan uh, in its entirety now we lose very close communication links as the message spreads over large territories because it, there's no internet there's no post yeah, but you there's said no you said they're memorizing it no no that, but what I mean to say you is that no no but I'm saying there's no way of connecting to one entity let's say or one authority right. yeah. in order to check that's granted Go on. because you've got people living nomads in China now these people are forgotten for practically 1350 odd years and in the last 50 years 70 years 100 years we've obviously now begun to travel and extend okay. our reach into these countries now what you would expect is if there was corruption or any manipulation or change whether accidental or deliberate that those individual chains of narrations that have ended up halfway across the world would be different and in fact no two people would ever really agree 
as to which one was the correct one. Because if I, for 10 generations, have been reading this Quran, I'm not going to accept your one. Well, it depends upon now, the, 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 now, now, Ken, I just... Normally, I would say yes. Now. And this is why I said that the preservation of the Quran, the tradition of it, is yeah. uh, different than other people. It, it's special. So now, Ken... He's conceded that what people do is... I mean, how many people out of 100, for example, would memorize the, the Quran? Well, out... Like in a given community. Well, uh, 11 million out of 1.5 no, million, no, no, no. 1.6 billion. In history, and you were saying, so this thing has been... Okay, so at the time of the prophet... Everyone is memorizing it, and you and I are in a group, it's like, okay, I'm going to memorize it, and you're going to memorize it, and we'll check each other, yes. now we're going to go to this next town, give it to someone else, yes. and we'll hang around for a couple of years, yes. and yes. do it every Ramadan, and make yes. sure they don't screw it up, yes. and then we'll go on again. Yes, yes. Now, if there's a process like this in, in place, which yes. I imagine there might have been, yes. given the way you describe yes. how people treated it... That's exactly how what it, happened. How, in, ...how it evolved, then there's the reason why it happened. It certainly yes. doesn't require divine revelation. Is it impressive? No, 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 no. Yes. No, no, my point to you, was Ken, the beginning. Ken, my point to you about having your cake and eat it was that the preservation is challenged when I believe the overwhelming evidence. So, for example, I never so, so, no, no, I know you did it, but I'm saying I, I can see it. No, but that's what as you brought it up. But that's why I said to you that I'm not talking, referring necessarily oh, okay. to you. I'm saying the cake and eat it scenario is. Either the preservation is cha challenge, in which case these wondrous things about grammar, about uh, so many other aspects of the Quran would be somewhat filtered down and lost, but they're not. Yeah, and so, yeah. and, and, and furthermore, so you the, could, the, the you're absence. Just using it to reinfirm well, uh, well, I'm saying. And I, we already well, said it. I, I'm, I'm saying in the absence of multiple readings through the Quran spreading over the globe is a very strong indication that it had to be preserved because if it wasn't you would have multiple readings that's what I'm trying to emphasize here now now uh, about those but points I, think I don't think I don't think there's a, a historian on the planet that argues that the Quran has changed a lot oh there are a lot of people who argue that point no 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 well Jay Smith Jay does, Smith but, does. But that's just, I don't call him an historian right. okay I mean Jay Smith makes some points I agree with but Jay is a right. cake and eat so if we agree he, if we agree this bit, I understand this bit. I understand if he doesn't like this bit, he doesn't I so, I don't listen so if we agree that it has been preserved, it comes up with spurious if we, sources. Okay, so if, so if we agree that it has been preserved, <laughs> then more or less up to I, I mean my my case in the beginning. Okay. It's just like there's so 23 we, Qurans, okay. evidently. But if we, but if you, but you said you believe line. you believe that there is a uh, more evidence to support its preservation than not. Is that exactly right? Okay. There's no reason. So if we here's what I said. There's no reason to say it wasn't preserved. Right. So that if we being said, there's an early history, and we have no extent complete Qurans from that period. There's nothing for me to corroborate it. All I can say is. So if we if we like it's probably been preserved. I understand. More or less. So if we deal if we if we deal if we deal with it. That it that that it's more likely to have been than not have been. Yeah. Then that makes these I can, things. Look, I'm very comfortable making. Then it makes these aspects that I've discussed with you very profound. Then, so for example, when Allah mentions the ocean and He mentions land, He mentions it can to the exact three decimal place uh, proportion of land to sea in the world. What, what is that? So. When Allah mentions land and He mentions the sea, I, I know we're going to disagree. No, no. But my point. <laughs> we're going to come back to that. Now my my, what po is these words my point. Mean? My point to you is no, no. He doesn't say that this is the proportion. I'm just okay. saying no, this is what I mean. that it says but land in, in the Quran and it says the word sea in the Quran. They're scattered over the Quran. Oh. The proportion of their mentioning is to three decimal places. The exact proportion of land and sea in the world that we find today. Now, what I'm saying, Ken, is this. Look, Ken, Ken, what I'm, Ken, let me just finish, please. What I'm saying to you is this, Ken. Individually, when we look at these aspects, on balance of probability, it could be a guess. It could just be random stuff that we're looking at, right? However, Ken, and this is my point, when we add the aspects of preservation when we add the grammar no 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 don't get me. hold on a second i'm not saying they do they do have to i'm not saying they don't have I'm to saying it's, it's, a, the, it's an incredible the, man-made the, procedure okay it's the, the, well. the grammatical concepts of the quran as discussed read. by raymond farin yeah, that one I can't say or that. professor neil robinson the so we'll give you a half there we'll okay it's right. okay <laughs> the the grammatical accuracies of re reference how the quran refers with matters 
when we add all of these aspects together Ken you know it's like me flipping heads and tails if I raise one point it's a 50 50 chance heads 50 percent chance tails if I now flip that coin a million times and it comes up heads every time right. mathematically there is a probability that could happen and this hinges this hinges exactly on what i said before. it could happen i said before but is it reasonable if, if he's been, if, if.